Tijuana there aren't really more options to to develop as a journalist in 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 a lot of media outlets. Most of the media we have in Tijuana are very official um, line, like uh, they they always go to the official versions. They don't really work in any kind of investigative journalism. Mm -hmm. They just like cover every, uh, daily events and they get the story about what uh, uh, what the major said or what somebody else said. So when I was in school, I really pictured myself working for Zeta. The, one of the first questions that uh, they make you when you come to an interview to Zeta is if you're afraid of covering certain topics related to violence, drug trafficking or, or any of uh, major things that maybe uh, some journalists are not willing to report and uh, if you say that you're afraid or that you will not like to touch those topics I think they tell you like thank you but <laughs> you're not really like what we're looking for. So when El Chapo was mm -hmm. arrested on January 2016 in Sinaloa, Zeta sent me to Sinaloa to follow like the case. We, I got into the house where he was actually escaped from and the uh, and sewage tunnels and like all, all this stuff. And I think that sometimes I think that it, the story is worth telling that I don't really, mm -hmm. I put that first and then like uh, I, I don't really worry about myself when I'm covering like any of the cases. I think my family <laughs> doesn't worry for me like a lot, but uh, I think I found something that I'm really passionate about, which is like, uh, it may sound like very cheesy or as a cliche, but it's like finding the truth, which is I think that is something that um, it's very necessary in Mexico, like we have very responsible governments and we have a uh, very indifferent governments. So uh, to me, I see it as a kind of a, of a responsible social action. Like if, if you have the resources to go into these cases that are important to the society or that maybe people want to be people, some certain people don't want to be a discover to feel that uh, that you're able to put the pieces together and get a story out there that uh, that it's that it's uh, very necessary to tell. I think that for me that's more important than any risk that I get myself into. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be more similar now that uh, Trump is gonna is in a new administration. I mean, I I'm I'm following what what is happening with the press in the U.S. since Trump arrived in office. And it's very scary because it's what had happened in Mexico like before. Like you see a president that is not responsible with what he says on camera, what he tweets, what, that he's willing to call liars to the press and mm -hmm. that uh, he's willing to, to publicly have a war against media. And I think that has been the situation in Mexico for so many years. And I think that for a lot of time, I actually saw the U.S. like a safe place where you could practice journalism. I mean, but right now with the Trump administration, I think it's an opportunity for journalists in the U.S. to exercise a kind of like um, of freedom, like to show that a, that a president, even if he's a president, has no right to tell you what to what, what you can actually work in what stories you can work in as a journalist and that when you have facts, not, not alternative facts, <laughs> but actually facts, and when you have information on your side, you're able to, to work that way. So I think it's going to be in a couple of years like more similar to Mexico's job in, for like what journalists do, trying to get the truth out even if the, if the federal administration is against it. But at least in Mexico, like uh, what journalists earn, it's very like little in, in comparison to, to other countries. So I think that um, not only like this corruption in government or these drug trafficking organizations is what puts like journalists in Mexico at risk, but um, like our working conditions as well. Uh, like most of us don't really have any health coverage or like any benefits from from the job so I think that it's very uh, it's very like mm, I don't know how to say it but 
but it's not very comfortable to work in an environment that you know that has certain threats and that you may not be covered from all of them. So I think that as 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 what makes vulnerable or, or makes like um, fragile a journalist in Mexico is not only uh, as I said before like the corruption in government or the drug trafficking organizations but the working conditions as well. I hope that uh, you're really passionate about journalism. It's not an easy job. It takes a lot of your time. Uh, once you get out of university, if you actually pursue uh, a career in media, you're gonna have to say goodbye to a lot of your free time. And if this is what you really like, you're not gonna see it like as some kind of sacrifice, but you're gonna see it. You're not really gonna be like able to tell until you actually realize that uh, maybe you had less time to be with your friends or your family or to do anything else. This is a very demanding job. You have to be 24-7 like available. Uh, you have always to be like, uh, maybe you will catch up like in your free time, like trying to get like some news feed to see what's actually going on in the, in the world. But I think that um, uh, journalism is a very necessary job in a democratic, uh, nation and um, I'm glad that actually uh, I think that's, that's very good that uh, you that US colleges have classes on in international journalism I think that's something that we really see in Mexico like we really, really stay focused on what happens inside our country so I hope that this gave, gives you any kind of insight of, of what means being a journalist in, in some other places of the world and just to to and to not feel frustrated if you go out of school and see that a lot of the things you learn in school don't really like teach you how to write a story or how to to make a, a story like um, suitable for any kind of media that you work on. To have patience and to read a lot. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Max.